All right, I'm pretty excited here. So tomorrow the video should be going up. It's a funny two hour long repair with Michael, the, the guy who came in today with his MacBook for repair that I talked about before. I'm hoping the video actually renders without issue. It's funny that I had a student this week, I had all the legal stuff and I tried to fit this in between that. I wound up not getting any lunch today but, and uh, trying to balance student, legal stuff, texting on the phone and also um, having the, the kid come by to fix his board. And uh, in the process, when you're trying to multitask on a lot of different things, something always screws up. And today, the microphone that I have been using for the past year and a half just decided to crap the bed. I used a different wireless setup that I had with these really cheap mics. And my mic actually had this clipping thing that I realized had nothing to do with the mic. It was actually the computer itself adding a bunch of clicks. So I had to use something to declick it. And this declicking thing that I have, which is great, it's great. It's not clipping, it's clicking where randomly there would just be a click in the audio regardless of the volume. And I have something that removes that, but it also takes forever and it also disagrees with the air filter. So sound isn't exactly eh, as good. And one of the other funny things with this video is, man, like I, I completely, every single thing that I did in this video didn't work. You have, uh, you have re, uh, trying to remove an SMC, reflow an SMC, reball an SMC. Eventually I just gave up and had my student who I had reballing SMCs on day one because that is how this class works. I like to torture people. <laughs> and uh, I, 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 we went over some strategies for it because sometimes the balls in the side don't melt and this, that, and the other. So I figured I'd have him practice on camera. One of the, some of my students should be familiar with this term. If you've, you were a Pat Price student and you've heard me say this, just remember, no pressure. And as always, I'll say that after saying, this is something that belongs to somebody who wants it back in an hour, or this is some, or I'm gonna put you on camera and then upload it for the world, but no pressure. And he did an amazing job of actually fixing everything. And then Michael, uh, the kid, actually wound up finishing and putting the, fin the finishing touches on the repair with just touching up the RTC circuit and some other things. And he wound up ending with a working machine. It wound up needing a couple of other things. It, it's, it's gonna be like about a two or two and a half hour video. But it was totally worth it because yeah, you got to. It, was, it wasn't really just the smile on the kid's face. It was the the grandma herself who brought the kid was just smiling and smiling. And I'm really happy for it. I'm going to if if he comments on the video, I'm going to make sure to put a link to his channel. I made sure to have him say the name of the channel on the show, but I forgot to get a URL to it, which which is which is my bad. But he he does have a YouTube channel where he does talk about some tech stuff, and I want to make sure that I include that. And eventually I'm going to finally come up, uh, have an update on what's going on with the whole legal thing. The, th the thing is, is that when you have an attorney say, by the way, don't talk about what we talked about until we do X, I can't say anything until we do X. But I do, I, I do have a plan up ahead. One thing that has been a little bit discouraging is that there have been a lot of people saying, you need to do this, you need to do that, we'll help you, we'll help you, we'll help you do this, we'll help you do that, we'll help you deal with this type of law, we'll help you with, you know, oh, I don't think you should go the conservative route, you should go this way, even though it's, and then the funny thing is that I was going to go, uh, I was going to go route A, they tell me to go route B, and then I decide, okay, you know what, I'll go route B, and then I get it, and then they contact me days later to say, you know what, actually, we can't support you in going route B at all. Uh, but, we'll, but we wish you the best of luck in finding a different attorney. And it's like, yeah, thanks. Great. And this is one of the things that I've noticed uh, with almost anything in my life is that the people who, um, who, who I am friends with, the people who I'm business associates with, they often don't, they're not about the idea as much as I am. So I'll be about somebody else's idea more than they are about it themselves. And that's something that I've always just, you know, it's something where I don't, I, I try not to act immediately. I try to wait and take time and think through my options and do my research because I expect the people that said, yeah, 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 rah, 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 yesterday may not be here today. And it's nothing against them as people. I don't, have, I don't hold anything against people that do that, organizations that do that. By all means, it's just I expect it. It's human nature for people to say one thing today and then tomorrow realize that, there's not so much thunder and lightning and cool stuff around the idea as there was yesterday. So I feel that I've come up with a plan that, that, that is going to serve me well, and I feel that I figured out what the metrics are, at the very least what it is I'm looking to accomplish with, uh, with, with, with what's going on. And uh, that's going to mean, here's one thing that I wanna get across with this, I guess above all else. Uh, there are people that have said, 
He made this entire thing up. He didn't get anything. And here's the funny thing that I notice about most of these situations is that with most of these situations, the company will do their best to get people to act of their own volition without actually, uh, without actually doing anything. So they'll try to get somebody to, let's say, remove something or get rid of something, but without, uh, and the thing, and that, that's one thing that I guess I've realized, uh, that, that, that's, that's one thing I've realized to be the metric for myself is that I, I want there to be something. I want to see, um, I, I want to see teeth. So there are things that may make sense for me to do, but it's not gonna make sense for me to do without a little bit of public teeth. And, and uh, that, that's kind of, kind of where I'm at now. And I can't, I, I can't really give specifics on anything until it actually happens, which is the pain in the ass of dealing with these types of processes. But I am, I am finally starting to, I guess at the very least, stop seeing, I'm, I'm starting to become excited about moving forward. I'm excited about what I'm doing. And it's one of the first times where I'm, where I'm actually looking at spending more money on, on a new employee than I make off of YouTube ad revenue because I'm so excited about the idea and the future of, of the content that I plan on doing. And, I'm, and the one thing that's staying put is that I am adamant about the, the, the method and the format that I use to educate people, and I don't want that to change in any appreciable way. And anyway, I hopefully you've enjoyed this video. I've had a couple of comments recently saying, I'm ignoring Lewis, I'm just staring at the kitty. So I figured that I would give the subscribers what they wanted and that they would get to see Blackberry the cat instead of me. So let me know what you think of this format. Hopefully by tomorrow, it depends on my internet. I'm, I'm expecting for that video with the D clicker and all that crap to finish rendering probably by the time I get to work tomorrow. I can't upload it from work because I have something like fucking one or th one to three megabit per second up at work. It's going to take forever. So I'm probably going to take it home. When I get home, I'll upload it with the 30 megabit per second internet I have here. And you guys will get to see, guys and, and girls, for the 1.8% female viewership in the channel, you will get to see a video of, I think, a really talented and really good independent young thinker who explained to me how they learned all this stuff. Uh, his, his grandma actually showed me a picture of him when he was one years old going inside of a computer, which I will not show you because if my parents decided to start showing you baby pictures of me screwing with stuff, I would be incredibly embarrassed. And that's as a 27 year old, I can only imagine at 11. And you no, know, nobody wants to be the kid with the mom running around going, look at how cute he was as a baby. I, no, I'm not gonna do that. But it was, it was pretty cool meeting him. And the, the, the one thing that, that really motivated me from this, I guess the one thing that I got out of it was getting to meet uh, the people who were inspired by the content. It's, it's, no, it's not just the iPhone repair store down the street. It's not just the electronics repair place a few miles away. Uh, you know, a, a kid started watching my videos when he was 10 years old. His, uh, his, his parents and grandma said, you know, he watches your stuff when he gets home before, before doing anything else, before, um, and before watching TV or playing video games or any of that, he sits down to watch the board repairs and go and, and think about why you did the things that you did. And it's one of those things where it's like, this can inspire analytical thinking on such a great scale outside of board repair. Because as I, as I say a lot in these videos, a lot of the same, a lot of the same tactics and the, the, the thought processes that I use in board repair can be applied to other aspects of life and other challenges and manners that I believe can genuinely benefit people. And it's just, it's just really cool to see what the kid's doing and to see that thought was inspired. Because when I, when I started looking at YouTube, I was looking at YouTube back when it was nothing but silly cat videos and pranks and, you know, like, here's a kid standing in front of a TV using a $100 camcorder to record the ending of 24. Just all that kind of stuff where, you know, it may be good for a quick laugh, but to the idea that that the YouTube content I created is actually inspiring young people to think is just, I don't know, it's just something that, I, that, I, that I'm really, really happy and humbled by. And I, gotta, and I wanna say thank you very much to Michael for, and thank you very much to his parents and grandparents for taking the time out of their day to come to the store and taking the time to and actually agreeing to have him in a video because I understand that there are a lot of parents out there that may not want their kids to be in a YouTube video. They may feel one way or another about allowing their child at 11 years old to operate a soldering iron. Uh, I grew up in a really different environment to that. I still remember my mother having this just incredible OCD about everything. And my dad was a chef. He was a chef at the, 
at the Plaza Hotel, at, I think a place called Club Quarters or Quarters uh, something in, in, in Manhattan. He was, he was a sh uh, the first cook at a lot of really, really nice locations. And when he came home, my mother used to say, I don't want you using the kitchen. You don't know what you're doing. You're going to mess things up, blah, blah, blah. And we would just have to kind of sit and laugh because like this, you know, again, he's making the recipes and preparing everything at the Plaza Hotel on 59th Street and 5th Avenue. You know, I had to hide all of this from my parents. I didn't have that supportive background. So, you know, when I wanted to start messing around with stuff, I remember a guy in IRC mentioning to me when I was online from a friend's basement that I could buy this via mail order. I remember putting money that I, that I made from washing bikes into an envelope, which is the stupidest thing on earth. I mailed money inside of an envelope and it actually made it from point A to point B. How fucking stupid is that? I did that and I got a soldering iron delivered to somebody else and then I bought the tools required and again, it was this rich kid and his parents were always away and he had, and you know, he had, so he had a lot of time unsupervised. He was a really, really, he was one of those people where the parents felt comfortable leaving the kid alone by himself because he never screwed around or did anything wrong. So I don't know if you had a friend like that when you were younger. And I remember screwing around with electronics that way because if I did anything at home, if I did anything at home, my God, like you would, I would have gotten yelled at for a year if I were trying to plug a nine volt battery in a certain way to something. So it's really, really, really encouraging to see that there are parents out there that actually support their kids' hobbies. Again, I, <coughs> I got by anyway. My, you know, I didn't have that type of encouragement at home where people encouraged my hobbies. And I did get somewhere because of it, but I always wonder if I had that encouragement, if I had been allowed to have the internet from a young age, if I didn't have to sneak away all this stuff outside, would my advancement have occurred quicker? And I really, it, it's really, it's really uniquely rewarding to meet parents and grandparents and family members that genuinely support the hobbies, particularly hobbies that support analytical thinking of, of their loved ones and their children in, in this really great way. Because you have to understand as a parent, you know, sitting in a repair shop for three hours while your son or your grandson films a video, that's not fun. That's not, I mean, she was very, very nice about it, but I can't imagine that being an, you know, an incredibly fun thing to do. There are many things that parents have to do over the course of their day, and one of them's probably not sitting for three hours in an overly air-conditioned room while somebody plays around with equipment. And that's just something that, 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 that I really responded to in a very positive way, and I want to see more of that in the world. I want to see more parents encouraging their children to get into these hobbies and to get into these, these industries where there's, where there's um, analytical thinking that has to be used to get things done. And I like seeing positive reinforcement of success. And I asked them, I said, you know, when, when you do something and it works, how does that feel? Do you want to feel that again? And it's a good feeling. It's a, when you put something together with your own two hands and you turn it on and it works, it's, especially when it didn't work before, it's a good feeling. And it's just, it's, and, and, and it leads it gives you confidence to try the next thing and to get to the next good feeling and the next good feeling. And, and you're going to chase that and you're going to accomplish something with your life that you probably wouldn't have otherwise. So that's all I have to say for today. I'm pretty excited for the future to come. Um, I'm sure that it's going to be filled with some interesting, uh, some, you know, just some interesting obstacles along the way. But I'm starting to feel more confident that I know what those obstacles are and that I know how to face them. It's something where, you know, is, if I have a plan... At the very least, if I have a plan, if I know what I'm doing, if I know where I'm navigating, you know, even if it's not going to be fun, it's something that, uh, that I'm excited about. So I, I am excited about this. Uh, I'm very, by the way, I'm very disappointed in a lot of you because I've been getting these tweets lately saying, look, your videos have all been downloaded and archived. And all, I, 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 I remember I told all of you that I very much so disagree with the YouTube downloader. I am not a fan of piracy. I think piracy is wrong. I think piracy is a terrible thing. All I wanted you guys to do was perhaps take, a, you know, some handwritten notes, maybe some handwritten notes, maybe write down some of the annotations. I did not expect that you would download them and redistribute. How dare you? So I just wanted to express my grave disappointment that every single educational video I've made has been archived forever for anybody who wants to find them if they have even the slightest inclination to learn how to repair Apple products. I'm very disappointed in all of you. I am personally disappointed in every one of you tarned cedars. <laughs> That's that for today. Uh, Blackberry, come here, girl. Blackberry. Clinton? Hi, Clinton. You're not Blackberry. You're jealous that I called the other kitty. Oh, you're adorable.
Blackberry, you want to come over here, girl? Blackberry, you want to come in the rocking chair? No. That mouse pad, by the way, is always on my chair or on the table. And Blackberry makes sure every single day, every single day, to take that mouse pad from where it is and drag it to that chair so that she can dig her claws into it. And I love her for it. That's cat ownership. How fucked up is that? What type of abusive relationship is that? She takes my stuff, destroys it, and not only do I allow it, but I love her for it. I don't, I'm, never, I'm never gonna understand this thing. You know, I got the cats. <coughs> I got the cats because I had, a, I had a, a mouse problem at an apartment that was a dump that I lived in about seven and a half years ago. So seven and a half years ago, I lived in a total shithole and it had mice. And I bought these little, these little traps they were supposed to help get rid of the mice, and they sucked. I, you know, they, they got stuck to mice. They caused me to throw away more socks than they ever caught mice. And also hurt sometimes, depending on whether I got the, you know, the snappy ones or the sticky ones. So I got a cat. I figured, I don't need a passive trap. I need an active trap. And Mr. Clinton was an active trap. The issue with Mr. Clinton is that he would get lonely, and he would scream and cry and scream and cry, and the neighbors would hear screaming and crying for 10 hours a day. And I also thought that was wrong. You know, I, I, I can't have a cat that doesn't have a friend. It's, it's, it's sad. So I got a second cat to keep him company. Now I have two cats, but now I don't have mice. And now, you know, I'm like, okay, it's time to go. I open the door and they look at me like, no, no, no. And I'm like, fine, you can stay. And they've stayed and they've destroyed almost everything I own over the past six and a half years. And that's that for today. Uh, I hope to be uploading that video and thanks for watching.